Did you know that we have control over how we set up our keyboard layout here in GarageBand iPad? Well, it's true, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. Now, if like me, you love GarageBand and you use it on your iPad, you may already be aware that we have this very cool keyboard layout function that we can use. But if you're not aware of it, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know and how flexible it can be for playing your keyboard parts. So the keyboard instrument here in GarageBand is pretty darn cool. We've got a heap of different sounds that we can select here and we've got ultimate control over how we actually set them up. But the limitation that we have here with the keyboard is that we've only got just over an octave worth of keys here with our default layout, but we can change that and we can do that using this button here. So let's tap on that one now. And what we can do is we can select from either a single or a double keyboard and we can choose the size of the keyboard as well. So if we select the size first, let's select this second size here. And now you'll notice that we've now got two whole octaves that we can actually play with. So if you wanted to play some more chords, It makes it a lot easier to be able to actually move around the keys. And we've got one more size as well. If you don't have big fingers like mine and you can actually move around more, we can select our third size here, which are even skinnier keys. So now we have a lot bigger range. We've got about two and a half octaves worth of range there that we can play with. So if you had smaller fingers than mine, you could play... You could play melody and, uh, and a harmony at the same time with your bass and your treble. But it doesn't end there. We've also got the ability to add in a second keyboard. So if we tap on the keys again, let's go back to this middle size so I can actually use it. And then if we tap again, we can tap on this one, which is our double keyboard. And now it's like uh, we've got an organ from the 70s here. We can have our bass down here. And we can play treble up on the top here, or we can move them anywhere we like. If we tap this button here to scroll, we can actually move the octaves to wherever we like them. So we can have two around about the same area if we wanted to, so... Don't quite know why you'd do that. Or we could even have our treble up here and our bass down here. So there's a lot of flexibility in how we can actually set up our keyboards. But what I tend to like to do is have our bass down here and then have a treble up here. So if you're playing a part where you wanted to have the bass at the same time as the treble, this is going to really help you out. So let's show you a quick demo of that now. So there you go, you can actually bring together two different sounds and play with two hands. Now, when you're not leaning over a camera, it's probably going to be a lot easier, but if we just play that back. Now, there's a couple of other controls on here. If we tap on the keyboard icon again, you can see here the key controls. So we can turn the key controls on or off. So if we tap on that one and we come back out here, this section here where we can control whether it's in scroll, pitch or glissando mode is going to go off. If we tap that again and tap it back on, it's now going to be back on there. If we just tap off, there it is. So we can now change between scroll and pitch and glissando, which is... So I suggest keeping it on glissando or, or pitch mode when you're actually playing, because if you're on scroll mode and you accidentally move your finger, it's gonna shift around there. So you can turn that off there. Now, if we tap this one here and go back to single keyboard mode, we've actually got another option here. And for some reason, we can turn off the velocity, which is just this slider over here on the iPad. The iPad has this slider for velocity where you can change the velocity up and down. It doesn't actually have touch sensitivity controls like we do on the iPhone. I know it's a bit unfortunate. So if we wanted to turn that off, we can flick that one off there and our key controls will turn off that key control there if we uh, do have the velocity on we can decide whether we want the velocity to be low medium or high and that's going to control how hard the keys are actually being hit and what sort of sound is coming through there. If you want to learn a heap more about the keyboard, about Alchemy Synth and about other keyboard instruments here in GarageBand, there's two videos linked right down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you on the next video.